Today we're going to be talking about virtual deposit contracts. That's right, we're going to be talking about Gandiji. We're going to be talking about Proof of Weak Hands 3D, probably the original. We're going to be talking about Bankroll. We're going to be talking about Power Bank. I'm going to talk to you about the pros and the cons, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and to be quite honest with you, I'm probably going to piss off all the fanboys of every single one of these because I think there's a lot to like, but I am critical of this space as a whole, and I'll talk about that towards the end of the video, but I'm a little bit critical of each one of these contracts for now. <clears throat> now, let's come over here to Proof of Weak Hands. Uh, Proof of Weak Hands 3D and Gandiji are both Ethereum contracts, and I'll explain to you what I mean when I say virtual deposit contract. Bankroll and Power are both on the Tron network or the Tron blockchain. <clears throat> um, so we'll, we'll cover each of these in detail. Basically, the fundamental, the fundamental thing to these all these contracts is there's a you get a there's a there's a price there's a fee every trade every buy and every sell has a fee proof of weekends and gandiji is 10 percent flat fee applied so instead of this going to the exchange the fee split between all current held tokens 10 percent of all the volume in this cryptocurrency ever experiences is set aside for you the token holders as ethereum rewards that you can instantly withdraw whenever you'd like by the way they no longer say dividend which is probably smart from a compliance standpoint completely decentralized humans cannot shut it down open source blah 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 blockchain network created by russian madman worth billions okay um sure whatever um so basically it works this way if you don't own any tokens and you take 100 ethereum to buy tokens you're going to get 90 Ethereum worth of the P3D token. And the other 10% is going to go to the other token holders in the form of Ethereum dividends or Ethereum rewards, whatever you want to call it. When you go to sell that 90 Ethereum, then what happens is there's another 10% fee, say 9 or whatever. And that fee is paid out to everyone as token holders. Now, with that being said, to be very honest with you, a lot of the... I don't, I don't want to complicate some things. It's not exact 10% in, 10% out on all of these because it doesn't matter. Most people don't even think about that. But without being said, Proof of Weekends 3D is uh, was the originator. I loved this contract. I thought it made so much sense. I freaking thought it was awesome. And I still like I still like the concept of the virtual deposit contract. And, and I say it's a virtual deposit contract because another YouTuber came up with that name. And it's a great name because really the benefit of these contracts is imagine putting a little bit of Ethereum, in this case, in a contract and kind of locking it up and earning some dividends. And it's it's transparent. You're not getting dividends from like, it's not a Ponzi scheme, right? You're, it's transparent how you're getting these dividends. As other people buy and sell, as long as you're holding, you're going to get your dividends back. You know, you've got to earn back the... 10% out, 10% in, you got to earn it, which is, you know, for round, simple numbers, say 20% fee, you've got to earn that 20% fee back. But as long as you're just going to park your Ethereum there, you're good to go. Now, with Proof of Weekends 3D and Gandiji, there is a price of the, the token does go up and down. And I don't want to overcomplicate it, um, but basically, as more people are buying, then the token price goes up. And as more people are selling, the token price goes down. So you can kind of benefit from the P3D token in this case going up in value. If you come here to the decentralized exchange, you can kind of see that right now, well, you can't really see it because I don't, I'm not signing it. Oh, here you go. You can see that each P3D token is worth 0 0.01559 Ethereum. There's 12,000 Ethereum in the contract. And over time, you know, if there's more Ethereum in the contract, then these tokens are worth more. When there's less Ethereum in the contract, these tokens are worth less. So some people see that as a positive. Some people see it as a negative. Here's what you just need to know. The gist is there's a fee paid in, there's a fee paid out on every one of these. The fee varies in some cases, but for the most part, it's, it's there's a fee in and a fee out. Now, my problem with P3D is, is not, I, I have one fundamental problem. The developers are slow as molasses. I don't think they've ever fully realized the power of this contract, ever. Um, I, you know, they, they came out with FOMO 3D, which is a very interesting sort of a game that they came out with. Um, they're supposed to be releasing, uh, I think, Team Just game anytime soon. I, I forget the name of it. 
Um, but they're supposed to be releasing that. I'm on the email notification list waiting for that to happen. Don't know when it's going to happen. The reality is I think that game, I mean, they were talking about a game coming out well over a year ago, like 18 months ago, and it was going to come out another month or two, it seemed like, and then another couple months, and then it was going to be coming out by Christmas, and then it was coming out after the first of the year. Well, here we are almost the end of this year, and supposedly it's right around the corner. You know, I'm just going to be blunt. These devs are slow as molasses. I mean, it, it's unbelievable how slow they are to come out with anything. Um, I like the fact that there's a lot of enthusiasm created by the announcements of what they're coming out with. I like the fact that they're original, but they're slow as molasses, and I don't really know that they really get the power of what they're doing. Now, Gandiji, on the other hand, Gandiji, he gets it. But the guy who, who kind of promotes this, leads this up, it's an open source contract as well, but he gets it. I mean, Sonny's his name, but he, he gets it. You're in dividends each time IND Indian tokens are whatever it said. I kind of lost it. Um, it were, this is identical. Some people call it a clone. I'm not going to call it a clone anymore. I used to call everything a clone, but it, I actually think, believe it or not, I think Gandiji gets the value of this contract better than Team Just does of their original contract. So in some regards, you might as well call Sonny the, the, the originator. I mean, he's not the originator, but he... He understands that this is this can be huge, and his goal is basically starting with India. Uh, whether I'm assuming there's a lot of people that may be unbanked in India, um, I'm assuming the economy isn't extremely stable. I could be wrong, um, but the the I'm not super familiar with the Indian economy. But there's a reason that he felt like to focus on this Gandhiji token in India. And, and that's kind of the theme behind it. But obviously, it's a smart contract. Anyone can participate in it. He's got videos on how. Same thing. It's 10% in, 10% out. Now, here's the difference with Gandiji. With Proof of Weekends 3D, they came out with FOMO 3D. And it was a, a game. And it created some kind of dividend rewards. And then went back to all original P3D holders. Team Just, their new game's coming out on Tron. I don't think it's going back to the original 3D holders at all. Um, Sunny seems like he doesn't like the idea that they're coming out with games. They're coming out with reasons and ideas, and and they're 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 a little bit hypey about what's coming next. There's always you know some sort of announcement that they're talking about periodically in their uh, Telegram. I mean their Discord groups. And he's more of like you know what? Forget the hype. Forget the shill. It is what it is. And he's just kind of like it's just the basic. I mean I don't. He does promote it. He does talk about it. Um, but it, it's just the basic contract. And and the idea was there's it's more pure. Essentially, now the problem I have with Gandhiji is the fact I disagree. I actually think you need to give people a reason to want to interact with the contract more often. And I think creating games and other interactive contracts can be a good thing. I don't know that it should be the only reason or the sole purpose, but there has to be a reason to want to interact with the with, with the actual contract. In my opinion, you, you've got to create reasons that people want to use it. You got to create reasons that people want to buy and sell. After all. That's how the so-called supposed dividends are created or the rewards, depending on the word you use. They're created because people want to buy and sell the tokens. So there's got to be more than price that people might speculate on or life events where they've got to pull out their Ethereum savings account, for lack of better terms. There's got to be something to cause people to want to use it. Um, but I've got something that may surprise you about Gandhiji towards the end. But it's it's very similar. I mean, it's the base contract's the same contract as far as proof of weakness 3D. Um, I will. I'm not going to go there. there. There was some a little bit of fud going on about this contract. And I'll be honest with you, it kind of pissed me off a little bit because the person fudding it knew that it was fud, which was, I found just a little bit annoying. And and I think the reason he was doing it was because he was trying to quote unquote play the game. He was trying to create some sales and to get people to want to exit. But I think that's that can cause people to get hurt. Because I don't think they realize that it can be considered a game in some regards. All right, so this is Gandiji. We talked about Proof of Weekends. We talked about Gandiji. Now we're going to move over to Tron a little bit. First up, we're going to come to Bankroll. Now, I will tell you, I of all these contracts, the one that I'm currently participating in the most is Bankroll Credits. Now, let's talk about Bankroll. Let's talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it. First of all, I like the fact that it's on Tron. I think Tron, for now, is a better blockchain than Ethereum. It's faster, it's easier to transact on. 
Um, and I think for now it's a better, from a usability standpoint, I think it's a better blockchain than Ethereum for now. Um, what I love to hate about bankroll is it's complicated. There's all this nonsense. There's a daily, there's a luck, there's a moon, there's a banker token, and you can, everything's weird and convoluted. And it's like, you know, the credits is a, a foundational contract. It works very similar. There's a, I think it's 10% fee, 10% fee in and 10% fee out. But then like a lot of these other contracts interact with each other. Um, daily is basically getting used up. It was a, it doesn't matter what it was, but it's basically going to get phased out. Luck is kind of a, I don't even want to confuse you with it. Luck is kind of a, a, a sort of a gambling sort of a game. And it's kind of how you invest into the banker token from this platform. You can also buy the banker token on other exchanges. I'm not even certain of the full exact reason on the banker token outside of, of trying to sort of mine it. It's, it's They're doing a sort of a weird sort of a kind of a staking sort of mining token. I actually don't pay a ton of attention to it. Um, but I just hold credits ultimately, and I had some of the daily. But the main reason I hold credits is because most of this, when you buy and sell Banker and, and, and Moon and everything else, a lot of the dividends basically end up coming to credits. So it's, it's in some regards, it's what Proof of Week Cans was. It's a, a different type of version of what Proof of Week Cans is doing, where there's a bunch of contracts interacting with one another. They kind of overlap a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, like when you sell um, out of Moon, when you sell out of Moon, it goes to credits. So Moon tokens, interesting, right? So it's they call it a PVP game or whatnot. But Moon is kind of interesting. Basically, I'm going to oversimplify this, but again, there's a fee in, a fee out. There's limited to how much you can sell. You can only sell 20% at any given time. But when you sell, there's a fee in, fee out. But then it comes to credits. You sell to credits, and then you got to withdraw from credits. But keep in mind, credits also when you're selling to credits, it also, um, you, you end up paying another fee. So it's like a fee on top of a fee. It's really, in my opinion, a bit of overkill. It's a little bit ridiculous, but the bankroller, the dev behind bankroll, give the guy credit for trying to stay relevant. I mean, the guy keeps talking. He's had this smart contract going on for a while or multiple smart contracts. He's had this platform going on for a while. There's always some sort of new development going on. It's relatively active. It's way more active than Proof of Week Cans 3D. I don't have a ton over here, um, but I just kind of hold it and roll. I, I mean, I treat it like kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a, a mini sort of a Tron savings account, just earning dividends slowly over here. Um, and that's kind of what I, I use it as. So that's, I mean, and that's, Banker on a convoluted nutshell. I basically use credits. Everything for the most part trickles down to credits. And when you transfer out of credits, you go directly into Tron or you sell out directly into Tron after your fee, of course. Now, Power Bank. Power Bank's the newest one on the market, basically. Now, the Power Bank and credits, I, did, I didn't mention, forgot to mention this. One of the things that makes Power Bank and, and Bankroll different, Bankroll credits different than Gandiji and Proof of Week Hands 3D, is there's no... Uh, price adjustment in the token. It's just a flat fee in, flat fee out. Credits, one credit is always equal to one Tron. Power Bank, I don't know what their base price is, but basically the price of the, the token stays the same no matter what. Um, they have an exchange, start saving money, blah, blah, blah. But how does it work? The smart contract will deduct the fee for every purchase and sell of power, split it among token holders, store user funds safely and independently for of an intermediate authority, whatever that means. Intermediate authority. Power Bank will also be funded through the purchase of its tokens via an ecosystem of decentralized applications built to sustain the network and reward power holders. Having a stable token means you can earn dividends from an entire crypto gaming ecosystem without worrying that your holdings will lose value from the actions of others, no matter what the other players do. Every interaction with Power Bank, its games provides earnings and TRX directly to each and every power holder. Nobody will ever be punished for holding why should I care? Well, basically, it's just a stable price, uh, and you pay in and pay out. Um, if you come look at their white paper, it is lame, to be honest with you. Like, it ain't really a white paper at all. It's just a simple promotional paper that's eight pages long with extremely large font. Like, there's... By the way, here's your fees. When you buy your first power token, the smart contract distributes 31.5% of your initial buy, 15% of the power token is goes to hodlers, the holders, 
one and a half percent development fee and the remaining 15% sell fee. So this is the other thing about Pyra. There's a 15% fee. I hate that. I think that fee is entirely too large. Everybody who wants these really super high fees, uh, these are all like short term. It's just a short term mentality, short term gambling mentality. Th this token's not going to go anywhere long term, like long, long term. Um, it's just not as it's, it's such a high fee. Now, the devs are making bank one and a half development fee on every transaction. I mean, that's just <laughs> you'd think it would be enough that they could hold the tokens or the original tokens. You think that would be enough. But oh, no, let's make an additional one and a half percent dev fee no matter what. God bless the devs. Here's the roadmap. Isn't that a joke of a roadmap? OK, so the thing with Power Bank that I don't like, well, they are coming out with games. You, you saw that mentioned. They've got this sort of a where's it at? It is a smart contract. So they say I haven't like audited or researched it, nor would I audit it. But they have um, this power crash in beta earlier today. It didn't go anywhere. Let's see if it comes up now. Well, I'll give it some time. It's basically supposed to be a game, and it sounds like they're going to try to come out with more games. Um, the, the issue with Power Bank, the issue with all these tokens is the way you make money is either over the very long term or you get in early. The way you make Tron is you, you it's over the very long term or you just get in early. Yeah, there's nothing here yet. Okay. It's over the very long term or you just get in early, everybody else jumps in, and then you get out after you know all the other big players come in. Uh, I don't think Power Bank, honestly, is going to make it super long term. The fees are entirely too high, 15% in, 15% fee out, 1.5% dev fee. I, I just think it's crazy. It's the new kid on the block. Everybody's talking about it. People have asked me to talk about it, and I really haven't uh, because I don't like to talk. I, I mean, I just don't like. I mean, I will tell you if I don't like something, but I prefer not to go all negative. I mean, I do like that it's a smart contract, but uh, it's, it's yeah. bankroll credits actually in a lot of ways. And I don't love bankroll credits. I just think it's interesting. The guy stays relevant. I like the virtual deposit contract space overall. To be honest with you, if I was going to choose one contract that I like the most right now, it's one that it's, the, it's, it's one of the ones I've never participated with. It's Gandiji. I have never participated with Gandiji. I have never owned any of the tokens. Actually, I think I do own some of the tokens. Someone gave me four or five tokens. But I, I've never actually sold those tokens or nothing. I've not done anything with it at all. Um, but the the Sonny gets it. Like, he gets the power of this contract. It's not about a pump and dump game. It's not about some sort of... I mean, this is just a bit of a scheme. I'm so sorry. I think even Bankroll is a bit of a scheme. Like... At, at some point, bankroll ultimately will either end or people will get tired of messing with it or bankroll or bank teller is going to have to come up with a reason for people to keep interacting with the contract over and over and over again. Um, there, there, I, I've heard of weird conversations in the telegram like uh, this is going to go to the moon, everybody's going to get rich, yada, 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 you know, universal basic income, yada, yada, yada. That's not going to actually exist in this contract ever. Um, but he keeps coming up with different reasons. None of them really last. He keeps having to come up with another reason, another new reason, another new contract for people to interact with it, um, which is why it like, keeps going, which is why it's fascinating. It's part of the reason why I'm, I'm there, and it's a Tron contract. But Gandiji gets it. Like he gets This could go somewhere. But here's the problem I have with all these contracts. Across the board, 100% of them, even Gandiji. I think there is a strong possibility, and I've said this before when I used to talk about Proof of Weekends 3D, I think there is a strong, strong possibility for the virtual de deposit contract to have so many different types of use cases, from the retirement to the, um, to the uh, uh, insurance industry. I can see so many different types of use cases. However, I don't think it will ever work charging 10% fee, fee in, 10% fee out. I don't think it's going to ever work like that. I think the fee has to be small enough that people almost don't recognize it or or small enough that they don't care to for a simple transaction, which means it might need to be 2% fee and 2% fee out, 3% fee and 3% fee out, 5% fee and 5% fee out, something like that. I think it would be 5% fee or less in and out. Now, a lot of people who participate in these contracts would hate that because it's like, oh my goodness, you know, you're never going to make any dividends like that. You're not ever going to make any rewards. That's because you're too freaking short-term focused. I mean, I think there's a long-term use case 
for something like this for more or less what Gandhiji is going for with the, you know, Sonny's going for with this Gandhiji contract. Like, I believe there's a possibility of there being some sort of a use case on a, either a cryptocurrency basis, some sort of an insurable pay basis, and I've covered it in previous con, uh, previous videos, but I believe that there's some sort of a, a long-term use case. I just think that it's not going to be about getting rich on, you know, passive income with the contract. I mean, if you want passive income, there's a lot of ways to earn passive income, um, but I don't necessarily think you're going to get rich with that passive income with uh, a smart contract, virtual deposit contract. Now, I do think it's a great way for you to throw some some crypto in there, hold it in a smart contract, a way to diversify your holdings. You don't have to worry about the smart contract collapsing. You don't have to worry about someone running away with your tokens, per se. That's awesome. Th that is far more stable than holding your, your tokens or holding your crypto on something like Binance, for example. So, I mean, I think there's a real use case here. I just don't think any of them have really hit the mark yet. But if anybody ever does figure it out, it's probably going to be Sonny at Gandhiji because he's got the right idea. I mean, he, I mean, he, he, he's a hundred percent, like he's a hundred percent realizing that this is a big deal. And none of these other guys are really getting that. They're just not. The, the proof we can's devs are all over the place with all sorts of things. Bank tellers kind of getting it. He just like he kind of does get that there's a big there's something here. I just don't know if he even has a clue how big it could be or what it could be a part of. That's just me. The power of bank people, I, that's, I don't think it's going to last. I think power, the fees are too high. It's going to go. I mean, it's listen, you're losing. You're going to a contract. Think about this. You're going in with the 100 Ethereum. You're going with 100 Ethereum or uh, sorry, 100 Tron. Let's keep it simple. You lose at least 30. You lose 31 and a half, but you lose 30. That doesn't mean you got to get back 30%. That means you got to get back 30 on top of 70. That's closer to 40%. Well, 35 would be 50%. You got to get almost 50% return back when you're 70. That is nuts. That is absolutely nuts. Who wants to invest in something where you're literally going to, for all practical purposes, you're going to end up with, you know, 70% of your original investment? What investment do you want to be a part of today? I'm going to say, hey, go put in your money. You're going to lose 70%. You're going to lose 30% of it right off the bat. And that investment is going to have to go up or appreciate. Oh, but, but, but by the way, the token price doesn't even appreciate. You lose 31.5%. At least with Proof of Weekends 3D and Gandiji. If people are buying in, at least your token price is going up, which can help that along with your dividends can help you make up for that loss. But th this is way too steep. All of them are too steep. But power banks, power banks, the worst offender of it. Um, but those are my those are my thoughts on the uh, on all the uh, smart contracts right now in this space of virtual deposit contracts. If you want to store some Ethereum somewhere, I would say store it on Gandiji. Um, that would be that would that would be you know not financial advice, but it you know. Take, it might be. <laughs> I, I, like, I feel safe actually telling you, you it's a smart contract. It's not going anywhere. The, the devs behind it aren't trying to do any funny business. They're not trying to, it's not a hype machine. Um, I would feel better about telling you to put your Ethereum on Gandiji than I would about putting your credits on bankroll. But I think the reason I have credits on bankroll, well, I don't have much. I have 4,000 credits. So it's not even worth even talking about. I'm in Tron right now. I'm definitely not in Ethereum right now. So, if I'm going to earn crypto passive income, it's going to be through the crypto tab browser. There's my shameless plug. Put a link down in the description. I'm going to be doing a withdrawal here before the end of the week, getting over 10,000 Satoshi per day right now with the crypto tab browser. Thank you so much for watching. If you're in the virtual deposit contract space, if you're in one of these contracts, do me a favor. Let me know which one you're a part of right now down below in the contracts and why you like that one the best. I would love to hear what it is that you like about the contracts. Uh, down below in the in the uh, comments. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up because no one else is talking about the virtual deposit contract space. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification icon. Listen, I've got a video I'm going to be bringing to you. I got a cryptocurrency wallet that I've just started using. By far, I believe it's probably the best wallet in the space. And most people just aren't talking about it. I'm going to talk to you about it. It is probably one of the best, most secure wallets 
in the cryptocurrency space um, that I've found. I'm going to be talking about that in an upcoming video, so you're not going to want to miss it because if you're not using this wallet, you probably should consider. If you're, if you're going to have an online wallet or a mobile wallet, you should definitely probably at least look at this one and evaluate it for all of your cryptocurrency, your Bitcoin uh, storage needs. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.